Good morning everyone, it's Tess and today is tip 291 and I'm calling it releasing your creative flow. And yes, I have on a turtleneck with snowflakes, but no, it's not snowing here yet. Um, I decided that for me, uh, creativity, although I've always been known as a dreamer and I've always been known uh, to always seek more, I'm also known to be a very uh, regimented accounting person. That's my background. Good morning, you Pendra. And um, it made me start thinking about some things that have happened in life. Like the running family joke is uh, I took cake decorating some years ago with my mom, my sister, and my niece. And whenever I would create something, my niece would go, don't worry, Aunt Titi, I'll fix it for you. <coughs> so it started making me think about, you know, good morning, good morning. It made me start thinking about how historically, by the nature of the work I do, I tend to be very uh, regimented and I uh, like control in a lot of ways. And I thought, is there a price to that? And I, I do know there's a price to that. So I started thinking about looking up articles on um, releasing your creative flow. Um, I think many of life's uh, challenges can be solved when we start to dip into our creativity. Um, we have to be structured about what we're doing, but we, and I know I, know I love that word structure, but, but we wanna, we want to get outside of, we want to grow our comfort circle. We want to expand and we want to uh, experience things in new ways and find new avenues to do things. And that means releasing a creative flow. So I found an article, um, Daniel A. Miller from 2017, and it is called uh, uh, Releasing Your Creative Flow. And it's actually from his website, danielamiller.com. And like I said, this is from 2017. And I just do like a Surrey search and that's how I found this article. And he was kind of giving pointers on how to release your creative flow. And again, I, I think this is important because I tend to be so regimented and try to follow a certain pattern that I need to loosen up on certain things. And what it kind of talked about is in order for creativity and for problem solving, and I never thought about this before, but you do have to have a creativity. I do a lot of analysis and trying to find issues. Well, that requires a creativity and trying to identify and this will sound boring to some but is it by line of business is it by accident year you know I have to try to in the quickest way possible find where something may have gone wrong well I think if I learn to release a little bit of creativity or different approaches to finding the answer to a problem that's gonna help me in a lot of ways of my life and so the number one thing that this gentleman said is you must let go of control because control is where you get that anxiety and that discomfort and you lose the ability to do something that's a little different than what you've done before. And we know the best solutions come from doing things a little different than we did before. Um, he said that hindrances to creative flow are overthinking, overanalyzing, and that desire for perfection. And Yep, I'm guilty of all of those, and it is kind of a natural to what I do for a living. But, but I can make my living easier by learning to find avenues that will allow me to produce the same quality work product in maybe a different way. And that's even part of technology. Technology changes our lives often. Um, we don't want to overthink and overanalyze because... It restricts freedom of thought, motion, and connection with our core. We need to let loose. We need to let our creative juices flow. And we let it, need to let it lead us down different paths. Had I not released that, the lot of things that I'm doing in the past two years wouldn't have happened. I'd probably still be stuck on a weight loss stall. I'd probably still be drinking multiple protein, prepared protein shakes a day, because I thought that was the only way to lose weight. I had to learn to release what I thought I knew so that I could experience different ways and up level my weight loss journey and up level my work environment and up level the opportunities that are presented in my life. So I totally agree with we need to try to find a way to tap into our creative flow and use it for the things that we already know. His pointers is uh, number one pointer was less lessen the intensity and sometimes and I do this and I didn't realize I do this but and sometimes you have to stop and start he said like an artist may work on a painting and then they'll put it away for a month or two and come back to it because they come back to it with fresh eyes I know if I'm solving an accounting problem sometimes I know I have to walk away from it 
and then come back to it later, even if it's just after a period of time for lunch, because I can see clearer. And we always jokingly, one of my bosses and I always jokingly refer to it as, I was too close to the tree. I could see the bark, but I couldn't see the forest. So it's even talking about in that creative flow, we have to pull away sometimes and come back at it because that allows us to come back at it fresh. And so there was a little bit of creativity on me, so I'm so happy about that. But the next thing he talks about is diversify, and he calls it creative cross-pollination. And I really like that because we hear it all the time in exercise, creative cross-pollination. Um, runners will do yoga or stretching or um, cardio, but we have to cross-pollinate or experience a bunch of different things because the more, and I don't even want to use the word discipline, but the more things we experience, the more we can bring to the table and then we can find the right path for us because all of our paths look different. And I think that's so important. Um, like he was saying, painters will write, uh, writers might do a poem, um, people might draw, but some kind of a creative outlet. And I find that when I'm in my worst stress of work, being creative is a great outlet for me. So this really kind of goes hand in hand with what I've kind of learned about myself. Um, so releasing that creative flow, it's, it's about finding avenues that will make things faster, quicker, smarter, and actually more fun. The next item he talked about is setting realistic expectations, and that can be a hard one sometimes. But when we make expectations unreasonable, it's a it's a control thing and then we kill the creativity so we so we really have to do that fine line and that dance about allowing creativity and allowing new options to come in while not over controlling it because then we stifle that creativity um he said if you think about artists good morning thomas good to see you he said if you think about artists and how they talk about their work they always talk about the wonderful accidents and some of us like me who are very structured never get that many of those beautiful accidents because i i've tended to be so control oriented that i haven't opened myself up to the new and that i'm working very hard on because it's been very very important in my weight loss journey but it's also going to be important as i move forward in other avenues of my work life and as i get into next phases of life so be realistic with your expectations remember the tighter you try to control it the more that you dampen the ability to see new ways to approach things. And a lot of us are guilty of that. And Doc V will talk about that all the time. In, and even Chris Noggle. Chris Noggle and his approach to trying to make us see how to make our money work. Doc V and trying to say, you got to stop saying, I can't drink water. I can't eat smoothies. I can't do this. I can't do that. We are our own worst enemy and we got to let the creative juices flow and see what kind of things we can accomplish. We may have the next best key that will take... 10 of our best friends on the best, on the most amazing journey with us if we just open up, let go of controls a little bit and experience all the wonderful things that are sitting out there that we can put together in a way that maybe somebody else isn't seeing. Number four, um, it does say moderate your expectations and because that heavy duty expectations causes you to over control. But number four, he says, is um, overthinking causes you to fear taking risks. And I have been guilty of this. And I, I made myself think about a few opportunities in my life where I have been fearful, but I jumped in. And when I did it, it uh, turned out to be an amazing thing. And I, I am not one to jump in. That is not historically me. And I'll say that I've had a huge amount of growth in going to like Inner Circle at Chris Noggles and the experience at Chris Noggles, because I got to meet a lot of people with different ideas and different approaches. And even their encouragement has allowed me to push forward on some things that have been in the back of my mind for a long time because there's other people that believe in you. But I started thinking about what have I done in my life that maybe people didn't think I could do, and I, I just jumped in. And in going to the inner circle and experience, I like signed up immediately and didn't think about it because I know myself well enough to know if I give myself too much time, I talk myself out of stuff. So when I first lost, and most people know I've lost over 100 pounds twice in my life. The first time I lost it, I took exercise to an extreme, trying to control the weight so that it, I wouldn't gain it back. And I had started gaining it back fairly quickly. Well, I didn't realize there was an underlying medical condition. And a team at my gym that I went to all the time 
did a bicycle ride and I jumped in when I, and I didn't even own a bike and I hadn't ridden a bike in years, but I jumped in and committed to a Make-A-Wish 300 mile bicycle ride over a weekend in less than four months. So not only did I purchase a bike and train to do a bike ride, I completed a 300 mile bicycle ride in just a couple of months and it blew so many people away. But what it made me realize is that I stifled myself by not letting the creative juices flow and by trying to control too much. So what I do sometimes now is I just jump in and I commit to things because I know if I give my over-analytical, overthinking mind too long, it'll talk me out of stuff. And I think that might be a, a problem for a lot of us. So think about when you're allowing yourself to talk yourself out of something. And if you get that good feeling and you get that feeling it's something you want to try, maybe commit before you can let the uh, negative uh, monkey in your brain talk you out of it. And I was thinking of other little things like this is kind of interesting, but they talked about writers and how um, sometimes if you want to write a book, just pretend that it's a practice book. And it reminded me of something. There's an author that has a series now on stars. And back when she was first starting or first really getting to be known, I worked part time in a bookstore and I had somebody come in crying wanting the next release of the series that she has. It's Outlander for those who don't know about Diana Gabaldon. And um, what happened is since I worked in the bookstore, I reached out to her and I became like uh, email friends with her for a period of time. Of course, I can't get anywhere near her now, but what ended up happening and what I found out is that she, when she wrote her first book, and I'm telling you, she writes thousand page books. When she wrote her first book, it was a practice novel. She never intended for anything to happen with it. And that woman took that first book and she's into releasing the ninth one in about a week. And she was making, last I heard, like $8 million per book. So give yourself a chance to just give something a try. Her, her practice book turned into something that's now 1,000-page books that she's making $8 million a book. So give yourself a chance. I can remember little things like me, like that Make-A-Wish thing. I jumped off, and my trainer didn't think I was going to be able to complete that. Boy, he was blown away when I came back with the medal after riding that bicycle ride. I can remember being in ceramics one time, and I had this thing they called an Italian wedding vase, and I wanted to mix the types of paints. And the one behind the counter told me that it couldn't be done. Well, I was so embarrassed by it, I went home and I did it at home and I didn't tell anybody. Well, I brought it back just to put a finishing coat on it. And she came over, the same person who told me that it couldn't be done, blown away by what I had done and started implementing that in her own store. And I'm not a creative artsy person generally known for that, but she followed something that I'd done. Well, hello, John. Hello, Brenda. Good to see you guys. So it made me realize that we all have some beautiful gifts that are waiting to be released and I think that what we want to do is open up and let go. Think of the areas of your life. Like myself, my weight loss journey is prime and forefront for me. This is the second time I've lost over 100 pounds, but this time I'm five years out and I'm still succeeding. But why am I succeeding? Because I've opened myself up to experience things that I didn't Sam Hewen, yeah, and yeah, I love those guys. One day I want to meet them. That is a goal. And this book series, I, seriously, there was a customer that came in crying because when I worked in bookstores, we got new releases a month before they came out so that the employees could read the books and sell them. And this woman literally cried because she knew I had the books in the back, but I couldn't sell them to her because in those days, they'd pull your new releases if you were caught selling before the release date. But I actually was pen pals with her for a while and was trying to meet up with her, but it didn't happen. And then, of course, everything blew up and now I have no way of even reaching her. But um. It just blew me away thinking that eight, she went from a practice novel, her practice novel turned into a series where she's making $8 million a book. So never give up on yourselves. I, I know that even in my, in my own life, there are small things that I've done that people told me couldn't be done. My 300 mile bicycle ride, my Italian wedding vase that the ceramic lady started following my same she did what I did in her store after I'd done it. I went back like two years later and she was selling things where she had used what I had come in with that, that I had allowed her to make me feel bad about. And she was using the same things that she told me could never be done and selling them inside her store. I'm not mad about that. It just made me realize that we have to stop letting people tell us that it can't be done. And worse than anything else, we have to stop telling ourselves it can't be done. So what I want to tell you guys is 
If you are stifling yourself by saying, no, you can't do something, let your creative juices flow. Experience things in different ways. If you're looking at the tree, pull yourself back and look at the forest. Try different things, whether it's a painting class, a writing class, something online. Do something different in a different way and maybe you'll find that you can bring a picture together in a way that you never dreamed possible and maybe it'll just be the spark that creates something new for many of us to find beautiful adventures and beautiful success in all the journeys of our lives. Have a beautiful day and thanks for being here everyone. Bye-bye.